Hey guys, it's Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I finally tried stamping nail art. So this is going to be a tutorial slash my experience and just some tips that I learned along the way. So the products I'm using are from Maniology. This is their Perfect Trio set, which comes with a smudge-free top coat, a black stamping polish, and a white one. And then for the stamper, I had no idea which one would be best for me. So I just went with the monocle stamper, and this also comes with your scraper tool. And then of course we need some stamping plates, so I have the French tip one, and then also the Modern Masterpiece, which as soon as I saw this, I was like, this is the most me stamping plate ever, so I was really excited to try it out. And going into this, I had the basic understanding of stamping where you put the polish on, you scrape it, you put the stamper on top, and then you put it on your nail. But that's pretty much all I knew, so we're just gonna get right into the stamping. I started off with a completely dry base, and then I just applied the black stamping polish over this grid design in the corner that I thought was so cute. And right away, I went over that with my scraper. So this is in real time, just so you guys can have an idea of how fast I was working. And I just kind of, I didn't really have a method to this. I just kind of bent it over and scraped out the design. And I figured it was important to not let the nail polish dry. So again, right away, I took the stamper and rolled that over the design. And I didn't press down too hard when I did this. I just did kind of a gentle rolling motion to transfer that on. And look at this, guys, I was shocked. I really didn't expect it to work so well, but then I messed it up. So for some reason, I thought it would be smart to like press it on my nail, but then start rolling it around. I really don't know why, because this completely messed up the design. Not, okay, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't good. It was poking off and missing in a few areas because I just started turning the stamper for no reason. But it's okay because it was only the first attempt. So before trying again, I did clean off all of my materials. I used nail polish remover and a cotton ball on the stamping plate and the scraper. And then for the stamper, I washed that off with soap and water, which I realized later made it way more complicated than it needed to be, but it did work. So I went ahead and repeated the process. I applied the nail polish over the entire design, scraped it off, and then rolled my stamper on top. And I did all these steps with a normal amount of pressure, so not too hard to where I'm pushing down into the plate and not too soft to where I'm barely touching it or barely scraping it off, just kind of somewhere in between, so I'm not sure if that helps. But this time when I went to stamp it on my nail, I didn't move it around, I just went straight down, pushed it into my nail, and then lifted it off. And that worked really well, I didn't have any issues. A little piece on the side did poke up, but I just used my finger and pressed it back down. And I still can't get over how quick and easy it was, like I've just been missing out on a whole technique. Anyways, I did clean off my materials again, and this time I used acetone instead of normal nail polish like the first time. And it was definitely faster with acetone, but they're both gonna work, so it's up to you. As you can see, I did get some of the design on my skin, and you do have the option of using a barrier before you stamp, but for this design, I just didn't think it was necessary. So I decided to use a toothpick just to see if I could kind of roll off that polish, and it actually worked really well. So you can do that, you can do the normal cleanup using acetone and a brush, or you could just use some tape. Here I'm just finishing off the design using the smudge free top coat and really when you apply the top coat to avoid smudging or smearing, it's going to matter more how you apply it so you really want to make sure you're kind of gliding it over the design instead of dragging it. But guys, I ended up loving the design so much that I decided to completely redo that first nail I did just so I could see the full mani and it turned out to be such a classy, minimal look but at the same time so effective and I, I just love it. I love it. Okay, moving on to the French tip plate. I just started again by removing the blue plastic, and this is what the plate looks like. You definitely get a good variety of sizing here, different widths, widths? Why does that not sound like a word? Um, different widths and curve types. You get some circles, half moons, and then this giant rectangle, which I'm not sure what you would use that for, but it's there. So I just went with the tip that I thought would look the best on my nail. I filled in the whole area with a generous amount of the white stamping polish, and once again used my scraper to get rid of the excess polish. I rolled the stamper on top, and this is where it got a little bit tricky. So I realized my nail was a little bit longer than the stamp, so I ended up scooting it down a little bit, which left me with the top of my nail not being covered. So you do have the option of just filling it in with the nail polish, but I just want it to be difficult for no reason. So I filled in another tip and used that to stamp that area that I missed. 
and this worked for the most part. You could see a tiny bit where the different stamps were, but once you put on a top coat, who's gonna know? So this actually gave me the idea to do another color French tip and have a little double French tip moment. So here I'm using that black stamping polish again and a smaller French tip, and I just stamped that right on top of the white French tip. Guys, I honestly did not expect this to work, but do you see that? It was lined up nicely and everything. Again, I didn't even really know what I was doing, but it was great. I was happy and I did miss a little bit of the top, so I just filled that in with the black polish. Okay, let's move on to some fails. Everything was going well and I was like, you know what, we're gonna try the circle. It'll be easy. No, I don't know what the circle was doing, but it was not rolling onto my stamper nicely. It was kind of showing up deformed or I was missing areas. And I tried this, I think four times. And then I was like, yeah, no, we're gonna come back to it because I don't feel like I was on a good streak. You know, when you're, you're doing good and then a shape just messes you up. Cause I was like, oh, it has to be the circle. So we're gonna move back to the other plate and try out some of those smaller shapes. And I did wanna mention, I realized I could use something sticky to clean off my stamper, especially if you only need one shape. So I pulled out a dual form because I had no tape and it worked so well. So instead of rinsing the stamper off with soap and water every time, you can just use tape or a dual form or a sticker, whatever you want. But yeah, for the circle, I tried using less nail polish, more rolling differently, and this is the best I could get it. So I went back to the French tip and just put a top coat on that because I just wanted to move back to the other plate at this point. Okay, so while I'm just stamping on random designs, I'm just gonna go over some just tips and advice I have for you guys, and also what areas I struggled in when stamping. So first off, when I switched back to doing designs that have lines in them instead of a filled in shape, it was so much easier. So if you're a beginner like me, I recommend starting with designs like this just because it's not as easy to mess up. Another thing you wanna make sure of is that you're working quickly. So from the time that you apply the polish to the stamping plate until it's on your nail, you need to be like going. So don't take your time, make sure all your materials are right there, cleaned off and ready to use. Because if you wait too long, the polish won't scrape right or it won't transfer onto your nail because it will dry. So even this step where I'm removing the other shapes around, I'm working pretty quickly just to get it off and then stamp it onto my nail. Another thing I realized with this plate, it probably would have been better for me to use a smaller stamper because as you just saw, I was picking up everything which made the whole process longer of getting it onto my nail. So next time I want to try a smaller stamper just so I'm only getting one or two designs. Now let's talk about these filled in shapes because I did go back to those. You guys aren't gonna like this, but it's really gonna just take practice because even throughout this video, I wasn't able to get the shapes super clean. One thing you can try is taking the stamper and pressing it down onto the design instead of rolling it. I did that for a few and that seemed to help with the edges a bit. You might have some trial and error, so if you roll it onto the stamper and there's a few areas missing, you might need to add more nail polish scrape a little bit softer or work quicker because the polish might have dried. If you're finding that it's just moving around too much, you might be rolling it too aggressively because I did that with the circle at first, or you might need to scrape a little bit harder or use less nail polish. So you see how there's kind of multiple things that could affect your stamping, but the great thing about stamping is you can tell what the shape or design is gonna look like before you stamp it on your nail. So if you roll it and you're like, oh, this isn't looking good, you can just take some tape, remove it, and then start over really quickly. So like even with this rectangle, it was worse than the circle. It took me like six attempts just to get it decent enough to put on my nail. Also a little picky. But the point is, even with multiple attempts, it was still a really quick process. Overall, I really liked stamping. This was really fun and I just, I love that it makes it so easy and approachable for anybody to do. You don't have to worry about your hand shaking. Well, I guess you could kind of shake, but for the most part, you don't need a steady hand or a bunch of brushes and supplies. And I'm really looking forward to trying this out some more, maybe getting advanced. Eventually, we're gonna stick to the simple things for now. But let me know what you think of stamping, if you like it, maybe it's something you've been wanting to try. And yeah, I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.